Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, supersonic crash and burn, Arian shuts down. Also, Sport Pilot and LSA expansion reportedly still on track. And Virgin Galactic conducts successful rocket-powered flight from New Mexico. Happy Monday, everybody. We hope you had a great weekend. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode today, so let's go ahead and start with Arian, one of the very few companies currently attempting to build the next generation of supersonic aircraft, this time for the BizJet market, has announced that it's shutting down. The ambitious program to build the AS-2 supersonic aircraft has failed to attract sufficient investment and is done before they even got a prototype in the air. The company has been quoted as stating, the AS-2 supersonic business jet program meets all the market, technical, regulatory, and sustainability requirements, and the market for a new supersonic segment of general aviation has been validated with $11.2 million in sales backlog for the AS-2. However, in the current financial environment, it has proven hugely challenging to close on the scheduled and necessary large new capital requirements to finalize the transition of the AS2 into production. Given these conditions, the Arian Corporation is now taking the appropriate steps in consideration of this ongoing financial environment. The AS2 was expected to net a price upwards of $120 million per airframe and had originally promised to build a major facility in Florida to see the project through. After the break this year, the Air Race Classic has a new format. Details after these messages. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Gamma has released the General Aviation Aircraft Shipments and Billings Report for the first quarter of 2021. Deliveries increased for turbine helicopters and propeller airplanes, while business jet and piston helicopter shipments were flat in the first quarter this year, as compared to the same period of 2020. Airplane shipments for the first three months of 2021, when compared to the same period in 2020, saw piston airplane deliveries increase 7.3% with 235 units. Turboprop airplane deliveries increased too, with 18.3% with 84 units, and business jet deliveries were flat with 113 units. This year, the Air Race Classic has a new format. The Air Race Classic Inc. is announcing that it will run the first ARC Air Derby in its history instead of its traditional all-women amateur cross-country air race. Due to the uncertainty of the pandemic and concern for the health of all involved, the ARC has modified its annual race into a one-day derby format retaining many of the ARC traditions, including its mission of education. The ARC Air Derby will be flying proficiency event that will highlight ARC basics, all women participation, VFR flight with multi-legs, leg timing, and awards. Eurocontrol forecast air traffic will be a lot slower for the next few years. 
Eurocontrol has issued a new forecast looking at the possible evolution of domestic and international air traffic in Europe over the next four years. The report's key finding is that air traffic is not expected to reach 2019 levels until 2024 at the earliest. Iman Brennan, Director General Eurocontrol, said, We'll probably have around 50% of 2019 traffic for all of 2021. By the end of next year, traffic will only have recovered to 72% of 2019 levels and will only get back close to where we were pre-pandemic by 2025. Canada issues no TAM extends quarantine and travel restrictions. The government of Canada extended the temporary travel measures restricting entry into Canada by foreign nationals until June 21st. To continue managing the elevated risk of imported COVID-19 cases into Canada, the government of Canada has extended the notice to airmen restricting all direct commercial and private passenger flights to Canada from India and Pakistan until June 21st. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Sport Pilot and LSA expansion reportedly still on track. EAA participated last week in the meetings of ASTM International Committee F-37 on light sport aircraft that were focused on the modernization of special airworthiness certificates rulemaking initiative. The committee is tasked with updating industry consensus standards for light sport aircraft to prepare for and accommodate anticipated changes to the regulations under the Mosaic project. Top of the priority list for many EAA members, the Mosaic package is still on track to expand sport pilot privileges and the range of aircraft they can fly, including a shift to a performance-based metric describing sport pilot eligible aircraft as opposed to the current weight limit. Additionally, a new category will allow larger and more complex aircraft to be built under LSA-like rules, but will likely require a recreational or private pilot certificate to operate as in the case for similar type certificated aircraft today. As we have previously reported, this category is being termed Light Personal Aircraft or LPA. LPA is promising because it will fully deliver on the potential of affordable aircraft certified based on industry consensus standards. Along with fully manufactured aircraft, it could allow many of today's kit aircraft to come to market factory assembled or professionally built for customers interested in this ownership option. After these messages, Virgin Galactic conducts successful rocket-powered flight from New Mexico. The incredible video after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. Virgin Galactic has completed its third space flight and the first ever space flight from Spaceport America, New Mexico. The Saturday flight makes New Mexico the third U.S. state to launch humans into space. 
VSS Unity achieved a speed of Mach 3 after being released from the mothership VMS Eve and reached space at an altitude of 55.45 miles before gliding smoothly to a runway landing at Spaceport America. On VSS Unity's flight deck were CJ Sturko and Dave McKay, while Kelly Latimer and Michael Masucci piloted VMS Eve. CJ, who flew as pilot in command, becomes the first person to ever have flown to space from three different states. Virgin Galactic fulfilled a number of test objectives during the flight, including carried revenue-generating scientific research experiments as part of NASA's Flight Opportunities Program, also collected data to be used for the final two verification reports that are required as part of the current FAA Commercial Reusable Spacecraft Operator's License, and tested the spaceship's upgraded horizontal stabilizers and flight controls and validated EMI reductions. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with store ideas or just to say hi. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.